Okay, David. celebration of the holy season of Easter. We pray for all those who are with us, and we pray for our world in this time of crisis. As we continue our service, we will share in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I will consume communion as it's consecrated here at the altar. And for those who have asked, I will go outside at the end of the service to do um, a curbside Holy Communion that is safely contained in a pouch, a uh, plastic pouch, and I will do a blessing on the persons that are there. Please do that at your own risk. Do that if you're comfortable with it. If you decide to stay at home, that's perfectly fine. But let us joyfully celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Our opening hymn is Jesus Christ is risen today. Oh, yeah. 
us our worship to give thanks for all that you have given us as we seek forgiveness for any wrongdoing that we may have done. We ask that you guide us, guard us, and protect us with your might as we offer ourselves to your service. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
and there's been darkness. And Jesus taught us that there's a promise with the resurrection. And that's the promise of eternal life. He showed us that after the darkness, the world was shown the light of God. That he appeared to the people that he left behind. Several times he appeared to let people know that he, the Spirit of God that dwelt in him, that gave that body life, did not die. Only his body died. And isn't it in our own lives that we know that our loved ones have continued beyond the change called death? That they are still with us? That their love continues to surround us, not only in our hearts, but in our memories? And we trust through faith that their bodies could no longer continue because their spirit needed the strength of that body to continue. And as we have to let go of people that we love in their physical presence, we never have to let go of them in their spiritual presence. And it's that spiritual presence, that undescribable thing called love, that not only keeps them alive, but lets them know that they're around us. Occasionally we will dream, a dream of a loved one who's no longer with us. And we awaken from that dream and we feel like they're ever present, that they are with us. St. Joseph relied on his dreams a great deal. And I realize that dreams continue to be with us. That perhaps a loved one has come to us and we create a dream around it so it's more believable to us. And what Jesus showed us in the resurrection, when he appeared back to the women on the road to Damascus, when he appeared in the upper room. When he appeared, not just back then, but throughout history we have stories of people that Jesus appeared to, people that the Blessed Mother appeared to, that you can't convince them that they didn't see that or that it was a figment of their imagination because they know in their heart that it happened. I've had some personal experiences that take away the shadow of death, that create for me the understanding that life goes beyond the physical death, that life goes beyond the grave. And that's what Easter is all about. We often fill our hearts with fear about death. But yet the resolve of Jesus appearing to us after the crucifixion, that horrible death, that week of, that turned into darkness, there's a promise that we won't know, we won't know when it happens, but when it happens there's that promise that the spirit that gave this body life will continue on. And the beauty of our faith is that Jesus knew that even before his crucifixion, even before his death. And he conveyed that to the people he loves. He conveyed that to us some 2,000 years later. We cannot have the physical presence of the people we love. But we certainly can cherish and hold dear to our hearts the spiritual being that gave their bodies life. 
because our faith tells us that is so. So as we continue our journey, we must take care of our being, both physically and spiritually. We must do that because our love must shine in life and continue to shine after life with those we love. We can sit in the shadow and negativity of the cross and cling to the horrors of life, or we can respond in a way of faith, where we know that the change from physical death into spiritual life is the promise that Easter gives us. We can mourn or we can rejoice. Good Friday was about mourning. Easter is about rejoicing because it's the promise our faith gives us and the hope that we walk towards. And no matter who we are, where we are, we know that God is with us, and we have that understanding that God is with us. So as we gather together at the holiday, whatever your situation is, if you're alone, realize you're not alone. You're with the presence of God, you're with the presence of the people who have been with you in life. If you're harbored at home with family and friends, keep your distance, but rejoice in the power of love. I can't tell you how many times a day I thank God for the families and the friendships that I've had in my life that give me a reason to continue to share my faith, and to take my faith to the faithful. So let us all proceed to go forth and take our love and our faith into the world, if at this time only in prayer. If only in prayer we can extend our love to the world in which we live. And we can pray that this crisis will come to an end. And as some of the world prays that the Spirit will pass over us. So much of our faith is based on the Jewish faith. Let us realize that we're all part of this world. We're all in this world together. So let us go forth in peace as a world of people united in love, no matter who we are. And let us go forth in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us share together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Our arm for joining him is he is Lord.
your blessing upon this bread and this wine that it may become for us the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we ask God's blessing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us prepare ourselves to receive the sacrament of this Holy Communion as we pray for all of Christ's church and the world. You may sit or kneel. God, we come before your altar this day asking for forgiveness for any sins or offenses that we have done against you, our God, against your creation, against our neighbors, or against ourselves. We ask forgiveness for these our sins. We give thanks for all that you have given us, for our family and for our friends, for our church and our parish family, for our community, the state, the nation, and the world in which we live. We pray especially for those afflicted with the coronavirus. We pray for the helping hands that have restored so many to a newness in life. We pray for those who continue to minister to their care. Help us to preserve your creation for the generations yet to come that they too may be partakers of your kingdom here on earth as in heaven. We pray for all people who cannot be with us, especially for the sick and the suffering, and for all people for whom our prayers are now desired. Jenny Redsicker, Alyssa Vanderpool, Dorothy Madoff, Donna Lash, Beth O'Donnell, Joe Brennan, Steve Frazier, Ann Price, Gail Yosmoyka, Connie Siapa, Nancy Zamoyski, Kathy Garrett, Katie Ahart, Katie Smith, Larry Padakey, Jackie Padakey, TJ Hart, Barry Craddock, Amanda Barassi, George Bowen, Jerry Gentilly, Cynthia Halstead, Cindy Burdick, Helen Winters, Patricia LaPierre, Terry Collins, Joseph Robert Cass, Ward Hungerford, Jack Carr, Richard Vinskoy, Dominique Leone, Gloria Kunzman, Bob Wilcox, Dan Jackson, Mary Burkle, Greg, Lawrence Gibson, Lori Globe, Diane Craig, Martha Brewster, Bill Palmer, Sally Marks, Ed Gilbert, John, Geraldine Peters. We trust through faith that you will touch them with your healing power. We pray this day for all those who have died in the hope of the resurrection. We pray especially this day for Sal Giannino, Michael McKee, Judy Kamenin Sidrick, we trust through faith that you have opened your arms in love and mercy and have received them into your heavenly kingdom. Be with their families and friends as they mourn their loss, that their empty hearts may be filled with the consolation of your love and the joyful memories they have shared throughout the years. And now together let us confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We seek forgiveness for these our sins, and are heartily sorry for these our wrongdoings. Have mercy on us and forgive us our sins, so that we may return to your path and walk in your ways all our days. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And now also with you. Let us nod in peace to the people that we love here and virtually.
of bringing death, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Take and eat this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he shared it among his friends, and he said, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new and everlasting covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, Lord, we present our souls and bodies in reasonable hope to life everlasting, trusting through our faith and our love of you that you shall always be with us, that we can never be alone. Strengthen us with your good spirit that we may come to know your love for us, following the example that you have given us through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us all to pray.
give you thanks that you have fed us with the spiritual food of the blessed body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Send us out into the world, giving us the things to do that are necessary for your creation. As we offer ourselves to him who died and rose again, your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. O God, we open our hearts to the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. We trust that after darkness there is a dawn. After life, there is continued life. As proven to us through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Be with our families and friends in this time of great despair. We pray that this will come to an end soon and that we can once again return to life. We pray for our servicemen and women, harbor them in safety. And we pray and trust through faith that you will always be with us. We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. May he be with us this day and remain with us always. Amen. 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 Our closing song is Lift High the Cross, the first three verses.